Hello everyone, in this video I'll be explaining reclusion. So if we go over to Google and we Google what is reclusion? So, reclusion definition. It's actually quite funny because the definition for reclusion is a reclusive definition. Uh, the repeated application of a reclusive procedural definition. So basically, reclusion is like calling something within itself. So, like, writing something within itself. And what does that mean? Well, if we take a look at this picture, for instance, we see, we see there's this big triangle. This is, I'm pretty sure it's called the Sierpinski's Triangle Mass. There's this big triangle, and inside of this big triangle, there are three smaller ones, each of which is the exact same as this low triangle. And within each of those three smaller triangles, there's three smaller triangles. And it continues down like that to infinity. So, if we were to look at a code example, I can open, my, open up my terminal and open this file. So, Fibonacci is one of the most common ways to demonstrate recursion. If you're unfamiliar with the Fibonacci sequence, it proceeds like 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, 35, etc. So, basically, each number is the sum of its previous two. 35 is the sum of 21 and 13. Oh, what? That's the 34. Uh, hold on. We'll explain some technical difficulties. But 34 is the sum of 13 and 21. 21 is the sum of 8 and 13. And then 8 is the sum of 5 and 3. So on. Just like that. Now, how do we write this? Well, we could use a loop. But an easier way might be to just create a function. So we can make const Fibonacci equals. We take in an n, and then I'll explain in a second. If n equals or is less than or equal to one, we're going to return one. And then otherwise, we're going to return Fibonacci of n minus one added to Fibonacci of n minus 2. And let's say we want to test this. So we're going to say const.log Fibonacci of, let's say, what is this? So 13 is at index 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It's at index 6 of the sequence. And if we execute this, we see it prints out 13. If we were to write out 5, it would give us 8. So how does this look? You might realize that this closely mimics what I just talked about, the rule I just talked about, where each number is the sum of its two uh, is the sum of the two numbers that come before it. So if n right now, which is basically the index, if n is, let's say, 6, so index 6 should be 13, we're taking Fibonacci of n minus 1 and Fibonacci of n minus 2. So we're adding these two numbers together. But how do we get 8 and 5 in the first place? We don't have these numbers. I don't see a 5 or 8 anywhere except for this 5 right here, but that's just the index. So where are these 8 and 5 coming from? Well, they're actually coming from recursion. Because we're calling Fibonacci of n minus 1, this entire block of code is calling itself. So that block of code is asking, alright, for Fibonacci of n minus 1, which is 8, we need to call this exact same process over again. So we need to find the sum of these two previous numbers. So for 8, that's 3 and 5. Now what about 5? Where do we get the 3 and 5? Well, for each of them, we're calling itself. So we're, calling the, we're adding the two previous numbers, which are 3 and 2. And that just repeats on forever. So for instance, Fibonacci of n minus 1, that's 8. So we're adding 8 and we're adding 5. But to get that 8, we're adding 5 and we're adding 3. But to get that 5, we're getting a 3 and a 2. To get that 3, we're getting a 2 and a 1. To get that 2, we're getting a 1 and a 1. And you'll notice this line right here, that if n is less than or equal to 1, we return 1. And this is a very crucial part of recursive functions, which is called the base case. 
this is this is when the recursive function stops, sort of. When it reaches the end of the road, we need to give it something. We need a signal to it that it's reached the end. So in this case, if n is less than or equal to 1, so uh, in reality, the pretty much the only times this is going to happen is uh, 1 and 0. So if I have 1 and 0, we return 1. So you'll see right here, at index 0, we have 1. At index 1, we have 1. Now for index 2, we have this 2 right here. And that 2 is calling the sum of Fibonacci n minus 1 and Fibonacci of n minus 2. So it's calling to, for the sum of these two values. And that's why we need the space case right here. So hopefully that explains how recursion works a little bit. And you can find it also a lot in this everyday world. And one of the most famous effects of this is the draw state effect. If we go to images, you can see there is this picture, and this woman right here is holding the box itself. And I'm pretty sure this is one of the first appearances of recursion, where something is holding itself, which is holding itself, which is holding itself, which is holding itself. Basically, infinite recursion. Alright, thanks for watching everyone, and see you in the next video.